Hey everyone, Rat Benatar here from the All Rats team, part of the Third Web community. And today, I'm going to be helping you try to answer one very specific, but very important question. Which blockchain should I use for my Web3 project? One of the biggest things we pride ourselves here on Third Web is offering you the power of choice when starting your project. We also recognize that sometimes making that choice isn't always easy. So if you're looking to learn more about which blockchain choices are available to you through Third Web and how to identify the right choice for your project, then you need to watch this video to the end. As always, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend who may enjoy it. Okay, so if you've ever used Third Web before, you may know that the first major step in launching a new contract is that you need to decide on which chain to launch on. Different chains are optimized for different use cases. Third Web currently offers support for all of the most popular blockchains, Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, and Phantom. And we're always looking to add support for more all the time, so keep an eye out for future updates. Before we dissect each individual chain, you should know that we first break down your choices into two main sections mainnets and testnets. You can see we have a version of each for the different blockchains I just mentioned. The most immediate reason why this may matter to you is that deploying on either will require a transaction fee. Mainnet fees are paid with actual funds and will cost you actual money, while testnets are paid with test funds and are therefore free. Testnets act as a way to test smart contracts in a sandbox environment before they're deployed to the main network and interact with real currency. By using a testnet, you can quickly get your application up and running without having to worry about the costs of deploying to the main network. If you're looking to launch your Web3 application with ThirdWeb, we strongly recommend that you first deploy your smart contracts onto a testnet. That way you can play around with them to make sure that you're happy with them, understand how they work, and then deploy them to the main net once you're ready to go live. For example, if you wanted to deploy your application to the Polygon blockchain, you could first deploy a smart contract on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. Even though you're on a test network, the deployment will still require that you have that blockchain's native token, even though the test currency has no real exchange value. Luckily, there are websites out there ready to help and send your wallet some of this test currency. In this case, I can use MumbaiFaucet.com. Once I have my testmatic, I can carry on from there, making my transactions with the testmatic in my wallet and otherwise carry on like normal. Okay, enough with the testing, let's get into the actual chains for your launch. And what better to start with than Ethereum? Ethereum is the most popular blockchain for Web3 applications. It is a layer one blockchain, meaning it's highly secure, but it is also very expensive to use when compared to your alternatives. The Ethereum network has projects such as the Board Ape Yacht Club and CryptoPunks, which have helped Ethereum projects gain a large community of users. Projects that don't require a lot of interaction with the blockchain are typically more suitable for Ethereum as a result of the network's high gas fees. With Ethereum, you also gain access to a large amount of money which already flows through the ecosystem. This is why Ethereum is the blockchain of choice for one of one artists, premium brands, and blue chip NFT projects. If you take a look at our gas estimator at thirdweb.com gas, you can quickly see that Ethereum smart contracts are both expensive for you to deploy and expensive for your users to interact with. So in sum, let's take a look at our main pros and cons for Ethereum. Pros, it has an extremely established network in comparison to others, making it the premier chain to use on the premier NFT marketplace of the world. It's the default chain on popular wallet apps like MetaMask, so it's ready for new users right out of the box. And it does exponentially more trading volume than most other chains. Cons. Completing transactions on Ethereum is going to cost you and your users more money up front than other chains. This makes it not ideal for projects like games that are going to require frequent transactions from your users. Next up is Polygon. Polygon is a layer 2 sidechain for the Ethereum network. Polygon has exponentially lower gas fees than Ethereum does, approximately 10,000 times lower. Using Polygon is a great choice for all kinds of blockchain projects, especially those that require a lot of interaction with the blockchain because of its low gas fees. As a result, many blockchain games are built on top of Polygon as they require a high volume of transactions. Just keep in mind that if you still want to use the ETH token when it comes to pricing your NFTs, the end user is still going to be required to have some Matic on hand to complete those transactions, as this is the native token for the Polygon network. So in sum, let's look at our main pros and cons for Polygon. Pros, substantially cheaper than Ethereum. 
As a result, Polygon is extremely flexible and a great choice for a large variety of Web3 projects beyond a simple NFT drop. As a sidechain, users enjoy all of these benefits while still maintaining the strong security of the ETH network. Cons. It may be more difficult when it comes to onboarding new users into Polygon for the first time, as it will require some extra steps from the user. It requires an additional token for transactions, and users may need to separately configure Polygon as a network in their wallet. Up next is Avalanche. Avalanche is a layer one proof of stake blockchain, which has a low cost to use and fast transaction finality times. Projects built on Avalanche are typically in the DeFi space or decentralized finance space, such as the Trader Joe trading platform. Building projects on Avalanche has the benefit of lower gas fees than Ethereum, and will expose your project to users in the Avalanche ecosystem. So in sum, let's take a look at our main pros and cons for Avalanche. Pros. In comparison to a network like Ethereum, transactions are much, much cheaper and much, much faster. With this, it's optimized for projects that rely on frequent, quick transactions where regular trading occurs. Cons. When it comes to the NFT space, it does not have quite the same established foundation as the ETH network does, and so your overall exposure to the NFT market will be smaller. Finally, there's Phantom. Phantom is a layer one blockchain that uses an alternative consensus mechanism called Lachesis. It is not a proof of work or proof of stake mechanism the way that chains like Ethereum or Polygon are respectively. You can learn more about Phantom's Lachesis in detail on their FAQ page. Now, why does this matter to you? Well, because in a nutshell, Phantom's ABFT, or Asynchronous Byzantine Fault Tolerant Consensus Mechanism, has faster transaction finality times when compared to Ethereum without sacrificing security. Similar to Avalanche, Phantom is optimized for projects that may require more frequent transactions from users, such as DeFi protocols or enterprise and web store projects. SpookySwap is an example of a DeFi protocol built on Phantom. So in sum, let's take a look at our main pros and cons for Phantom. Pros. It is faster and cheaper than blockchains like Ethereum. Given this information, this chain is great for projects that involve frequent transactions from users, whether that be a DeFi protocol or perhaps an NFT game that requires regular staking and unstaking. Cons. Similar to Avalanche, when it comes to the NFT space specifically, it does not have quite the same established foundation as the ETH network does, so if you're launching an NFT project, your overall exposure to the NFT space will be smaller. Whichever chain you decide to launch your project on, just know that there's always going to be some level of nuance to each, whether it be learning which tokens are used for clearing transactions, or what the blockchain explorer sites are, and more. We strongly suggest doing a bit of research into whatever chain you're thinking about before using it. And you can always feel free to ask us questions in the comments of these videos or in our Discord. One bonus is that all of these chains that I've mentioned are all EVM compatible, meaning that they all share a similar code base and they are all supported in the popular wallet app MetaMask. You may have also noticed that we very recently added support for Arbitrum and Optimism, and we'll be covering both of those more extensively in a future video. Which blockchain would you like to see supported next? There are still so many out there. Perhaps even Solana? Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today in this video, and if you have any questions about the content, please just share with us down below. We would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.